Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Ari, and today I have a Goodreads Choice Awards reading vlog. So this one is going to take a little bit of background to explain. Every year Goodreads does a Goodreads Choice Awards where they have like a shit ton of different categories and out of 20 books users can vote for their favorite books. Mostly it's a popularity contest. Are the top books ever really the best book in the category? No. But they're the most popular books in the category. So what I do every year is in most of the categories, though not all of them, I read the winner and at least one other book per category. I try to read more than just two books, but some categories like poetry um, is not really my thing <laughs> or science and technology also not really my thing. I usually only read two of. Fantasy I read all 20 books, kind of. I will at least read one book in the series for all 20 books. Um, sometimes it's like the 16th book in the series and I haven't even read the first one. So, so this vlog is not actually me going through and telling you what the two books that I read in each category and what I think about them, who actually won, blah 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 blah. That you will see next month. This month I tried to finish <laughs> uh, reading these. I will probably read one or two extra ones in October, but October I like to save for mostly spooky season, so I don't want to really focus on that. So this month I am going to get them done and I only have four left, which is pretty good, honestly. I need to read the winner of the mystery and thriller category. Uh, I was kind of putting this off until spooky season, um, but I'm reading it before October because this fits a bunch of prompts for readathons and stuff, which is The Guest List by Lucy Foley or Folly. I don't know which one it is. This is kind of a locked room mystery where a very small wedding party is on this island and somebody is killed and it's somebody in the wedding party, but you don't know who the killer is. I'm not even sure you know who died. I don't know. All I know is wedding and locked room mystery. I don't read a whole lot of mystery thrillers so I don't really know what to expect from this, but I'm gonna read it. The next book that I read I think is the winner of the science and technology category which is uh, a Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough. I am reading this as an audiobook because David Attenborough narrates it and how dare you read a book by David Attenborough and not listen to him narrate said book. I mean is that even a possibility in life? But yeah I have this from Libro FM. I will be listening to it on audiobook this week. Um, so we'll see. It's not nature isn't really my thing, but sure, why not? Uh, next is Dearly by Margaret Atwood, and this is a poetry collection. This probably won the poetry section because Margaret Atwood was probably the only name that anybody recognized in this entire section. So <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I have purchased this through Kindle because I don't want a physical copy of it. So I got it on my Kindle. I'm gonna read it. It shouldn't take long because poetry doesn't really take so long. I'm picky about my poetry and I don't know how to choose poetry collections that I will like. It's very weird. There are some, like I just blindly read poetry and some of them are like, this is amazing. But most of them I'm like, I hate it, thanks. So 
we'll see if Margaret Atwood, I, I love her prose. I very, very much enjoyed the three books that I've read by her. So I liked all three of them. So hopefully her poetry is as good as her prose. And the last one is a graphic novel. It is not the winner of the graphic novel. I've already read that, but I just needed a second graphic novel to read. And for that, I am reading Fangs by Sarah Anderson. And I have a physical copy of it, but I don't have a physical copy of it here. So you get a picture instead. But yes, those are the four books that I will be reading in this video. Um, I don't think any of them are particularly long at all. I've got a graphic novel, a book of poetry, and a, a thriller, and a nonfiction. This isn't very long. Poetry graphic novels won't take very long to read. I don't know how long David Attenborough's book is, but we'll find out now, won't we? Anyway, if you are interested in seeing the other things that I have read in what I thought about them for the Goodreads Choice Awards, make sure to hit that subscribe button because that video will be out next month. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And before we get into the rest of the vlog, if there are other books that were nominated for Goodreads Choice Awards in 2020 in any category that you desperately think I need to read next month, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. You can find my Goodreads linked in the description box and you can check and see if I've already read it or not, but anything that I haven't read that you're like, oh my gosh, you're missing out if you do not read this book, drop it in the comments and let's get into the vlog part of this. All right, I am back and I have two books to talk about right now. First, I read Fangs by Sarah Anderson. Uh, yeah, I thought this was really cute in a like gothic cute kind of way. The main character is, or I guess the main character is, it's a love story, is a vampire girl in a werewolf guy and they kind of like fall in love and do vampire and werewolf things and she's very you know vampy and gothic and he's like a giant puppy dog <laughs> and a, a lot of it is like adorably cute and sweet and then some of it is like murderous but cute so this one's not really so much of a like continuous story. It's like every four panels or nine panels or however many, it, it, it like varies. But every like page of panels is like one little snapshot of their lives. Like in, it's in chronological order. So you get like a snapshot of the meeting. Um, and then like you know, first few minutes of dating and then moving in together and it's just like a, a good chunk of time um, but not like so much of a story as like a bunch of little just cute little standalone snapshots, snapshots and you can jump into like any of them. Like you could open the book in the middle and kind of understand what's going on in like its own little enclosed space um, without having read like the entire a story so far basically. So is this like the most wonderful comic I've ever read in my life? No, but I really really enjoyed it. So I'm glad I read it and then the bind up of it is like really really nice. It's like a dark blood red cloth bound hardback um, and it's super like bougie for absolutely no reason but I like it. I'll, I'll definitely keep it on my shelves. The other book I read was an audiobook and that was A Life or Our Life on This Planet, A Life on Our on This Planet, A Life on Our Planet, uh, something along those lines <laughs> uh, by Sir David Attenborough who has been known for years and years and years 
as a like wildlife show producer on the BBC. Um, he joined the BBC like really really early on um, basically from its inception and he has been doing nature shows since then and he has got a wonderful voice to narrate those nature shows and so basically if you're going to read this you have to listen to the audiobook. There is no point in reading these words. You need to listen to Sir David Attenborough tell you these words. This is paired with a television show of the same title and I don't know if it's like the exact same content in both the show and the book or if they're like companions that need to be done together because I I don't watch TV. I haven't seen the show. <laughs> it may be a movie, not a show. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Anything visual picture wise that's not YouTube, I probably don't watch it. Anyway, this was fantastic. This is basically about global warming and he goes through out the book and it's really well written and really well organized and put together with like distinct subjects for each thing where first he's like this is our planet this is my experience with our planet this is what we're trying to save so he kind of like explains nature he explains like why he has the ability to speak on this, like what gives him the authority to speak on global warming. And then it goes like, this is what's causing global warming. This is what's happening to our planet. This is very bad. And then a lot of things stop there. It's like global warming's bad. As an individual, you should do this. No, that's not what he does. He goes into like, this is how we save the planet. And most of it's like, you as an individual, there are small things you can do, but it's not really up to you as an individual. There are huge corporations that are fucking up our planet and this is how we get them to change. And like, and then he even goes into like, this is what's already being done to save our planet. So it's really like intelligent, but easily understood, easily consumed. There's no like, big words or a lot of science or a lot of math that you're not really going to understand. Um, there's no like, you're evil, you're bad, you've been fucking up everything your entire life and you were the cause of the destruction of the planet like you get with like the banning of straws in California. It's like, <laughs> consumers using straws, yeah, you probably shouldn't use plastic straws, but that's not going to save the world. <laughs> um, but it's like the big things, the big picture. It's like, this is the only planet we have. There's only so much space. There's only so many resources. If you're not using renewable resources, you're eventually gonna run out. And this is how we stop whatever the fuck we're doing to our planet now. And this is the time frame that we need to do it in. And yes, it is an emergency. If we get to the point where the stupid people of the world are gonna be like, oh shit, this is really bad, we're all gonna die, then you're you're out of time to fix it at that point. But yeah, basically this was really good and I highly recommend it to basically anybody because it, even if you don't care about global warning, warming or saving the planet or anything like that, like just listening to this man's voice is worth getting this book just for that. Maybe watch the TV show or movie. That might also work too. I haven't seen it, but I can recommend the book. I ended up giving this five stars. Great, fantastic, perfect. I have two more things left. Um, I'm still, I'm, I've started the guest list, but I switched to an audiobook. Um, so I'm kind of like, reading part of it and listening to it on audiobook because I just don't have, like I need an audiobook right now, um, but I just don't have another book on my TBR other than that one that's available on audiobook. So I'm kind of like saving that mostly for audiobook, but I'll probably start reading more of it. Uh, but I do have an e-copy of Dearly 
So that is probably what I'm going to talk about next. It may even be tonight because it's a book of poetry. I don't think it's going to take me very long to finish. So you might catch me in the same outfit here in a second. Uh, or it may be a couple days. We'll find out together. All right, as expected, Dearly did not take me very long at all to read. Um, I am finished with it. Read it on my Kindle. Beautiful cover. There you go. Um, I, t <laughs> I don't have a lot to say about this book. So yeah, uh, it's a book of poetry. It is not like, it's like a freestyle poetry. There's no like structure to it really. Um, all of it's very short. <laughs> uh, there doesn't seem like to be an overall theme of the book. It just seems to be poetry, like more recent poetry that Margaret Atwood has written. There were themes of like growing old. Um, one, like a bunch of poems that seem to be about like the death of her sister and it seems like her sister might have died very young, possibly been murdered. There were themes about uh, the sexual assault of women, which makes sense because it's Margaret Atwood. There were themes about like global warming, which also makes sense if you've read her Orcs and Craig series. Uh, but yeah, it just seemed to be like all over the place. There were poems that I didn't care about, poems that I was like, oh, that's dark. <laughs> Uh, but I don't, I don't read poetry very often and it's very hard for me to care about poetry. Um, this one falls interestingly enough in like that firm like three star where it's like yes I read it I'm going to forget about this in like ten minutes. Um, there is poetry that I have read this year that has been awful <laughs> and I can talk more about it because it's awful and then there's poetry that I've read that is like fantastic and I can talk about it because it's fantastic but this is like so firmly like yes I great that was poetry the end <laughs> so I'm going to move on and I'll come back and talk to you about the guest list. All right, I am done and this is going to turn into a boring vlog because all of these books were just mediocre. This is no exception. Uh, basically what this is is a mystery thriller and it takes place on an island off the coast of Ireland and it's kind of in the middle of nowhere you can only reach it by boat and there's a wedding happening there so this follows a handful of people from the wedding party you've got the bride the groom the best man the maid of honor bridesmaid uh a plus one and the wedding planner and we know from the beginning of the book that somebody has died but we don't know who and they've been murdered that this, that's really the only thing we know. So you kind of go through this book, it's got like all of the different perspective plus like two time frames. You have like, it starts the day before the wedding where the bridal party is like spending the night at the, the hotel or the, the house on the island, the castle, the folly, I don't know. Um, but the bridal party is spending the night, the night before the wedding, and then it goes, there's the other point of view that's like actually at the very end of the after party where everybody, or where like somebody's been killed, right? So you go through all of the different perspectives and then you flash back and forth between time or back and forth throughout time and you kind of like figure out about all of these different people and you're trying to figure out who's the killer like who has a reason to kill somebody and then 
who's done something that deserves to be killed, right? All of the people in this book are like absolute shitty people and it's established early that all of them are shit people and I think that's just to be like they're all horrible people so you could easily imagine all of them being killers and all of them being like victims um, and everybody has like their own super fucking unrelated problems um, and like baggage from the past and all like <laughs> How do I say this without spoiling? I'm gonna do kind of a spoiler. So basically there's a shit ton of people with like a bunch of baggage in this book and all of the baggage ends up relating back to just one person <laughs> and like the idea that this one person, every wrong thing that they've done in their life is, is to different things to different people are all like coming back into this like super coincidence <laughs> situation where it's like if all of these people were involved in like one thing in the past that would make more sense than one person being a shitty person in a bunch of different ways throughout their entire lives and every shitty thing that they've done is like somebody related to that situation happens to be at this wedding. <laughs> I don't know how much sense that makes but yes it's it's like a huge coincidence it was super predictable like there was one plot twist that I didn't catch but once it happened I was like oh that's obvious I don't know why I didn't catch that but like every other plot twist I had predicted like way early on in the book um and <laughs> it's just it's mediocre it's forgettable but if you happen to have this uh or you can get like you're really interested you can have access to a free copy like you can get it from your library or something like that maybe pick it up but I wouldn't spend money to go out and get this or unless you have a burning desire to read this it's not like it's a waste of your time to pick up because it's not it's not good it's just me like it exists it's not bad it's not good it just exists but that's gonna be it for this video. I am sorry that it was kind of incredibly boring and that there wasn't much to say about any of the books in here. They were all just like, oh, that exists. Great. Uh, but yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye!